Thank you. So yes, I'm a humanitarian aid worker and most often find myself in situations uh, a bit like this. Uh, there I am in Mozambique in 2007 uh, during a flood. I pretty much follow the disaster trail, earthquakes, conflicts, anywhere that's really dangerous and there's a good chance of me getting shot, uh, that's pretty much where I like to be because I thrive off that. But I also, like all of you, want to make a difference and change the world. So for the last uh, decade, more than that actually, I have been living in Africa and in Asia and most recently living in Port-au-Prince, Haiti after the earthquake there, doing relief projects and doing my best to really make an impact. And in those places, I also make films. I'm a filmmaker and I document the work of nonprofits and the nonprofits that I've worked for with the goal of relaying the message back to the donor of how their funds are being used. Because as you know, it's extremely important to encourage people to keep on giving and keep on supporting causes by showing them that their funds are making an impact. So I've had this interesting front row seat for the last decade on to be able to watch the evolution of how the power of our human connectivity has been put into play to make a difference in the world. And I follow that very closely and it's something I'm very passionate about, about making a difference through uh, social networking and that type of thing. But I think there's a few fundamental flaws in the way that nonprofits position themselves and harness the power of our connectivity. And those are some of the things I'm going to be talking about today. Now, nonprofits in general and governments are having an impact. They're doing some really incredible things around the world. We're making a difference. As a human society, things are getting better for the people living in extreme poverty. And just last week at a TED conference, Bono d delivered some really exciting news. He said that the percentage of, the po of our global population living in extreme poverty, which is defined by people living on $1.25 every day, has been declining dramatically. It's fallen from 43% in 1990 to just 21% in 2010. So that's really exciting and that's really good news. And he says that if we, go, if we follow this current trend, by 2030 we will have completely eradicated this band of extreme poverty. So that's good news, it's working. We're harnessing the power of our connectivity in positive ways to make an impact. But what Bono doesn't really talk about in, in, or talked about last week in his TED talk is the, is the other bands. You know, I, I know a lot of people in Port-au-Prince, Haiti and, and other parts of the world that live on $3 a day who still live some pretty tough lives and need to get out of that cycle of poverty. And he's not addressing other social issues like um, you know, uh, animal welfare, our environment, human rights issues. There are lots of social issues that we need to be doing more about and having a deeper impact on if we really want to see positive changes happening in the world. And so what are nonprofits doing to leverage the power of our connectivity in order to increase our effectiveness? Why should we have to wait till 2030 to see this band of extreme poverty go away? Surely we're all on Facebook, we're all connected. Why can't, why can't it just be tomorrow all working together that we actually come up with a solution and get things done. There are thousands and thousands of nonprofits out there. We're bombarded every day with these messages of what you can do to make a difference. And with all these nonprofits working on all these issues, why aren't we seeing the types of change that we, that we really want to see in the world? Why are we still enduring all of this poverty? And nonprofits are smart, and they realize that we're all connected now and that we're all connected on Facebook and, and that we're all talking to each other. And they're, they're starting to harness these new uh, creative outlets using the internet and online platforms. And I want to just show you a few examples of some of these platforms that exist now. Before, it just used to be this one-way flow where you could give to a nonprofit and you see a video. Now, these are very creative ways of doing it, like Charity Water. They have a way where you can donate your birthday. People give, instead of giving you money for your birthday, you ask them to give money to the nonprofit on behalf of you. And that way, you can do a well in Ghana. And it's having a, a lot of success. There, there are other online platforms such as CrowdRise, which enables you to start a crowdfunding uh, fundraiser. And you can put it on Facebook and inv invite your friends along to help you uh, drum up support for nonprofits. So there's a lot of cool things happening online. But still, we're not seeing the types of results that we want to see. And again, I think there's a fundamental flaw in the way that we're positioning ourselves. And you can really see that when you turn and look at the numbers of people visiting these, these online platforms and these nonprofits. There was a company called Convio, who is a payment processing platform for some of the largest nonprofits in America. And they surveyed 180 of their biggest clients, and there's some really big names on their roster. 
And what they found was there's some really low numbers when it comes to unique visits to nonprofit websites every month. 7,000 unique visits is pretty much the average number. And that's boosted nicely by an animal welfare groups. People really care about animals. Uh, and, and you can see there the numbers of the types of nonprofits and online platforms that are driving traffic. But 7,000 unique visitors a month is a very low number when we, when we consider that these platforms are talking about changing the world. And what are those 7,000 visitors doing? <clears throat> they're coming, they're making a donation maybe, they're seeing what the nonprofit's doing and then they navigate away and they probably don't visit again for the next month or the next couple of months. And so what we're seeing is these 7,000 people that are visiting nonprofit platforms are essentially being preached to by the nonprofit, just like the nonprofit's continually preaching to the choir. And they're not really cultivating new people to come in. They're not really going after new, new supporters and new activists and motivating people to join them. They're just preaching to the same group of an average of 7,000 people every single month. And we know that to really harness the power of our global connectivity, we need to reach out beyond this choir. We need to go out and convert new people to come and join us so that collectively we can really make an impact. And so my colleague and I at Riot started to really investigate why is it that people aren't visiting these websites. <clears throat> Even though we're harnessing the power of global connectivity, we're not getting the type of traffic that we need. And we look beyond the fact that, yes, we're all connected. And there's this assumption, I think, amongst nonprofits that just because we're connected and we're all on Facebook, that people will come. Build it and they will come. That's the mentality now. But when you really think about it, People aren't necessarily interested in helping you build a well in Ghana. People aren't interested in all the causes that nonprofits are pushing every day. What people are really interested in is what's happening today. What people are really interested in is news. And so instead of trying to harness the power of our connectivity, I think that nonprofits should be trying to harness what fuels our connectivity. And so I'd like to make this statement. I think that news is the fuel of our connectivity. The reason that we're all connected, the reason that we're on Facebook and that you stalk the person that you've been stalking is because you want to see if they have a new photo online or you want to hear something new and we're all hungry for new information. We're not connected necessarily because we care about changing the world. I hope many of us are, but the real reason we're all on Facebook is because we want news, we're consumers. The reason why news websites get the most traffic and social networks get the most traffic is because there is an incentive to return time and time again. You, you go to a news website maybe once or maybe twice, several times a day. And so that's the, that's the way to drive traffic. And so if news is the fuel of our connectivity, and we know that we need to harness the fuel of our connectivity if we really want to see global change, then wouldn't it be cool if there was a news platform that did that? And that's what we started. Riot News is the first news platform where every single news story links you through to an action, where the news is the driving force behind how you interact with the world. We don't just link you to nonprofits so you can give money. We link you to all sorts of different ways, signing petitions, activism, uh, you know, writing your reps. There's a lot of different ways you can interact on this website. And so let me give you a couple of examples of how this works and why it's making a difference. Here's one of the stories last week. Horse meat was found in tacos in Europe. Big news story. Um, on any other website, the BBC, Huffington Post, you would read the story, you'd get to the end, and that would be it, you'd move on. Now, you can read the story, and at the bottom of the story, I wish I could show you the actual website, but at the bottom, our, our editors curate the story and link you through to an action you can take. If you, if you are interested enough to read this story about horse meat and tacos, maybe you care about the issue of global hunger. And right here on the website, you can link through to Feeding America and find out how they're doing a lot to fight global hunger and, and hunger here in America in particular. And right there on the website, all interactive within the site itself, you can give and become part of the news. And so our tagline is, you can become the news. Let me give you some more examples. Here's a big story last week as well. U.S. troop deaths in Afghanistan at a five-year low. That's really good news. And just maybe if you're interested enough to read that story or share it on Facebook, maybe you're also interested in learning more about the Iraq and Afghanistan veterans of America. And there again, you can give on the site. And for us, it's not, it's not about being good and earnest and trying to get, entice people through their desire to change the world. We just want to be a full news service with everything from entertainment, politics, breaking world news, and funny stuff too. Here's a story about the, 
the crazy woman who loved to tan, and spectacular tan she has. And that was actually a big news story last week. People were talking about it and sharing it. And right here on our site, you can look at more videos of people with crazy tans. Oh, and there you go, the Skin Cancer Foundation of America right there, <laughs> linked on the site. And so there's this very interactive experience going on now where we know that we're all connected. We know that Facebook's powerful and all these social networks are powerful. But that in itself is not the power. It's what fuels that. News, we think, is the fuel of our action. We think it's the fuel of our human connectivity. And now on Riot, we have all of these nonprofit partners that are joining us. We have some really big names. And it's cool because we're giving them a new outlet to reach out to donors. Now they can share articles that are related to them, so they have new things to share with their people. They're no longer just preaching to the choir. They're trying to entice people and interest them by what they're interested in. This is really flipping the model on its head. Nonprofits traditionally have been a voice crying out in the wilderness, hey, come help us drill a well in Ghana. No thanks, I'm not really interested in that. I'm more interested in the woman with the, the brown face from tanning. Well, now we flipped it on its head. We're capitalizing on what you are interested in and what you're talking about at work around the water cooler and using your interests and what everyone's connected and talking about today to link that back to causes. And so the cool thing is we just launched this site in October, but it's, al it's already working really well. And as I mentioned before, the average uh, number of unique visits for nonprofit websites traditionally has been 7,000 in the last couple of years, every month. But already on this website, we're getting 7,000 unique hits every single moment at particular times. So that's 7,000 unique eyeballs on causes for the first time, and we're very excited about this model. And so I just want to encourage you, as you go out and consider how, how you can change the world and what you're doing to change the world, don't just think about how you can harness the power of our connectivity. Really think about what drives the power of our connectivity, because if you can harness that, the change that we're going to see is going to be much more powerful and happen far quicker. Thank you.